Oh no, it's because my switch went to sleep. Okay, so I'm going, oh my god, I'm going to tell you about these boot covers that I made um, about a year ago. So I made these for my Captain Amelia cosplay, and the thing is, is that when I was making them, these were like kind of, they were kind of the last thing that was going to be done. Um, I, <laughs> I was, I was finishing these the night before we were leaving for the con. So, um, I, they were, they were very much a, a rush job. Um, and so, so they're held together really poorly. Um, and then I, you know, when I was walking around the con, they, they were falling apart. So what I want to do is I, I want to take these apart and rework them because they're just, they're just really bad and they look really ugly. This cosplay, the whole cosplay, there was a lot of stuff that should have worked and didn't. And it was, I, it, I was just having a time and there was a lot of stuff that I wasn't familiar with that I was doing for the first time. And it, 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 but I still, it, you know, the end product does look pretty good. So I would like the booths to also look good. What I what I'm having to do is is throw screen accuracy like perfect screen accuracy out the window because that's usually kind of my first thing that I go for is screen accuracy, um, but I'm going to uh, put more of a personal style on these. So what I'm going to do my my aim for this is that I'm going to use the existing material and sort of like shape it a little bit better and then turn it into kind of a spat sort of thing, rather than a cover that is solidly attached to the whole boot. So I, th like, step one after I, so step, step zero is, is taking them apart. Step one after I take it all apart is to, um, uh, color the, uh, the base shoe black, and I have, I have found a tutorial on a technique that just uses, like, acrylic paint and I think just water. So I, I'm, I'm gonna try that and hope that that works, and then uh, f uh, figure out how to uh, make this shoe uh, closable again on its own. Because I took the zipper out so that I could insert this big long boy zipper um, that you can't see, <laughs> but there's a there's a big long zipper there. So I'm going to make it so that the shoe can fastened closed and that might just mean punching holes in it and tying it off with some twine but um we'll see what happens all right so this is what they look like right now they are they are held together by e6000 and staples because so, that's the kind of um time crunch i was in they are also you know, have some duct tape holding them together because while I was at the con, they started to fall apart um, because E6000 turns out is not as strong as I thought it was going to be. So I've got a bunch of duct tape on the seams back here and it's like, it's fucking, it's, they're, they're just, they're ugly and falling apart this you can t it's a fucking hole in here this one oh my god this is coming off of the uh, seam entirely um so that's unfortunate oh it's pulling up the leather on the inside that will probably prove um a problem for me in the future uh but yeah so they're you know the shape of them is a little wonky on my legs too like where the um cut comes up to um and they're just hellish so <laughs> the shoes have been disassembled they're sticky and gross because one of them had duct tape on them so i gotta, gotta clean that up because that's all duct tape glue and it's gross and i don't want to touch it so my initial plan for these is not gonna work 
because that was dependent on all of the fake leather being intact instead of only some of it. I am unsure what I want to do with this. I may or may not use these shoes anymore just because of this, which would be a shame because the shape of them is really nice, but I will see how salvageable they are. And I think these are going to be the last thing that I worry about because with what I'm planning, fortunately, it doesn't depend on using these shoes specifically. I could, I could, I could swap the shoes out with something else. And I do have another pair that are um, healed. They're not this high, and they're not um, the heel is not the same shape. But uh, I think they could still work in a pinch. I may or may not try to repair these, or you know, like cover this up with something. Can I help you? Can I? Can you like? Okay. So after much peeling of E6000 and much removing of staple, uh, what we have are two front pieces and two back pieces, which are paired off and two big long zippers and two horribly disfigured shoes. I am sure that there is some kind of chemical substance that will uh, dissolve E6000, so at some point in the future I'm going to look up what that may be and see if I can clean up the backs of these zippers. Not right now though, because right now I'm kind of done with these. I threw away the uh, pieces that were um, the sort of caps on the toe and heel of the boot they were those were separate pieces i'm thinking that these shoes are just a little bit too far gone for me to want to bother to try and salvage them um, especially since the duct tape one this one's moldy now for some reason and uh i don't I don't think I want to deal with that, so I think I'm just gonna throw these away altogether. So, at least I have other high-heeled shoes that are already black, and at least these were only like $3 at a thrift store. But yeah, now that these are no longer a horrible, sticky, disgusting pile of pleather on the floor next to my bed, I'm going to probably just probably throw those away and then take these and put them in a bag and they will wait there until after I move because I need to move soon. I moved! Except plot twist, I didn't move to another place within the same city that I was living in. I instead am back in my childhood home because wouldn't you know it, trying to find housing is hell. <coughs> <coughs> Which means that we are accompanied by her. Okay, so I have my materials. The zippers are not really something I'm concerned with right now. I think, uh, well the next thing I need to do is definitely fit these to my legs a little bit better. They're already, you know, pretty well shaped, but like they need to be adjusted because like that, that's not something that um, this new pattern is going to be able to account for. I need to fit the whole things to my legs in a new way. Why is this so uneven? Holy shit. What I think I want to do is I'm going to take a pair of like pants that, that fit me snugly and use that as a sort of uh, base for how wide they should be um, and see 
see where it goes from there. horrible angles my tripod broke and I need a new one so now my camera is sitting on a music stand that doesn't adjust <laughs> okay so what I've got here on these two is that these these dotted lines are gonna be my stitch lines because I'm actually gonna sew it together properly this time it's a little concerning on this one because this here means that I really don't have any seam allowance in uh, these parts, so I may have to like fudge it a little bit and take more from the back piece and just kind of, I'll, I'll make it work. So these are the back pieces. I've I'm realizing now that I should have uh, cut them right sides together because the the leg of the pants that I used to trace the stitch line is slightly curved because you know that's how my legs are and so they're not they're not totally uh, even so we're gonna deal with that as best we can but I've determined sort of I'm evening out like where the point needs to be I don't know why this one didn't get like cut like a like a point like I don't I don't know like that's the line that I was gonna cut and then it didn't happen and I don't remember why so like these these boot covers were a disaster going to be stitching one side of the the leg together not the other side because the other side needs a zipper so I'll have one side attached I need to determine whether I want the zipper on the inner or outer leg or inner, inner inner side or outer side of the leg last time I had it on the outer seam uh, and I have to decide right now if I want that to be the case again, probably. And then after that, I think I will be, I will have to cut the spat pieces out and figure that out and then attach them to the, the ankle of the leg pieces and then put the zipper in. And I think it's just that simple. So real quick, I'm gonna um, rub off all of the E6000 that is still on the uh, outside of these these leg pieces because there's still a little bit there. And it rubs off really easy. Turns out, I think what the thing is, is E6000 doesn't really stick to like smooth non-porous surfaces. And that was my problem. I That's not what I expected to happen and that's why they were falling apart on the convention floor because it just it just doesn't stay on this material very um very well 
Okay, they're all clean on the front now. So now I'm going to uh, stitch them together on the sides. I'm going to hand stitch them because one, I kind of want to do a back stitch the whole way around because that one's very secure and I want to do like, I want to do wider stitches because this is kind of, the way I understand this material is that the structure that it has, what little it has, comes from this kind of felted material back here and then the uh, the vinyl part is this really really thin layer that just kind of sits on top of that so it's prone to like stretching and tearing so I don't want the holes of the sewing to be too close together which is kind of your only option by machine and then also it is a really flimsy material but I still don't really want to put it through my machine because I have heard of uh, pleather you know screwing up a uh, machine's like timing and and how it functions like it'll it it could still do a number on it I don't really want to take that risk I don't I don't think it would because it's just it's such a I can push a, a really thin needle through it just by hand really easy um, but still I don't want to risk anything with my machine I am pretty sure the next thing I need to have happen is the spats. So these are the shoes. I literally don't remember if I've shown them on camera before or not because it's been so many months. But these are the shoes I'm going to be wearing instead. So I'm looking at spats patterns and I should be able to just kind of wing it on this. I'm going to like I'm going to like trace the shape of the back of this and then probably up a little bit for where my leg would be and then sort of come down and it's it seems very simple and with a little bit of trial and error I can get it nice. first one out and I sort of tried comparing it to a shoe and immediately realized that it's too small because it needs, you know, space because this is a three-dimensional object. This needs more room to go around and the back needs more room to go around and so I cut another version off. I added just about a half inch on either side. I am not sure 100% if it works or not because it's, you know, paper and is not a terribly flexible and cooperative material but I think this pattern will be enough to work with. Alright I've cut one of them out and sort of pinned it together. This is what it looks like sort of on the shoe and it's not half bad. I might be happy enough with it like this to just go ahead and cut the other one out and call that it. Like I have been thinking periodically about how exactly I want to finish these ends because I need to finish them in some way or another because the white will sort of show through. I'm realizing that it's not quite so thick as I remember. It's, you know, I could turn this and hem it, but I don't really know what I want to do that, especially because on seams that would make it so incredibly thick and I don't really want to deal with that. So I'm wondering if I could maybe get some black like twill tape or something, some kind of finishing tape and use that to go around the edges. And if I do that I would also make the, I'm gonna have, it's gonna have a strap that goes under the heel because that's how spats work. I would also make the strap out of that tape that's just easy. 
My mom has said that she's sending me a box full of stuff, and some of the, some of that stuff is uh, finishing tapes. So I think uh, I will see what I what kind of goodies I get in there, um, and see if I can uh, use whatever it is that she sends me. Okay, well now I have it on my foot, and something clearly needs to change somewhere because this is not quite the right shape. So I could pull this back somewhere or I could something needs to happen to make the front bit tighter but the rest of it seems to be sitting pretty much okay well all right I just did a, a, a whole bunch of, of cutting and repinning and redrawing lines and and cutting and doing more repinning and lots of stuff and I've uh, come up with something that is much smaller and much better fitted than what I started with um, because I'm a perfectionist and I don't settle so now I now I have something that actually looks nice you know nice you know when things look nice so this actually looks like a proper you know garment that belongs on this particular shoe and that's kind of what I was going for so there we go
step I think is to like is to sew the zippers on I I did indeed look up you know what will uh, dissolve or do whatever to E6000 and it's uh, the easiest thing to get one's hands on would be nail polish remover um, I don't have that because I don't really paint my nails um, so I am I don't I don't really think I want to go out and buy some just to soak these in it like I can still it's they're all they're still like covered in it you know like <laughs> so but I can still push a needle through it you know so so I don't think I want to deal with that and I think I'm just gonna put them on as they are even though they're like really ugly <laughs> I would just try to sew really close to the zipper part of the zipper um, so that as little as possible of the this bit um, shows to the outside world. Don't know that my zippers are covered in old glue. <laughs> but before I do that, I think I'm actually going to um, like fold down the the, the seam allowances um, and do like a like a running stitch along a bunch of them for like extra strength. That's that's something I've been thinking I want to do, so I will do that and then I'll put the zippers on. the way I have to put the zippers in upside down technically because it's not quite long enough to run all the way up the whole length and it also it doesn't open on one end it doesn't open on this end so if I had it down here the spats would be closed uh, around the foot and I wouldn't be able to get the shoe in there also this hurts that I've been <laughs> I've been sewing through so many layers of pleather today and yesterday and it just my fingies are sore zippers are on i ended up having to uh like rip off and redo the first um bit of zipper that i sewed on i don't know which one of these that was i don't i don't know which which leg it was on but uh it was um far too far away from the edge and if i had left it like that it would not have closed around my leg so that was a bit frustrating. At this point they are functionally done. If I had to wear them out for whatever reason, like just like as is, I could and they would work, they would function just fine. Uh, so now all I really have left to do is make them pretty. I decided I was initially I was going to stitch up all the way to the top because these because the zipper doesn't you know run the full length of the height of the boot. Um, so I was going to stitch this up at the top so that this, you know, comes to a, a, a attached point. But I actually, I was trying it on and I decided I liked the way that this little gap looked. And then also if I leave it open like this, it'll fit on my leg better. So I am going to leave that. I'm going to have to even out the uh, the sides. These aren't perfectly, like, they don't, they don't come to a point at exactly the same place so I'll probably have to cut this one down just a little bit and it's the same way on that one too and then right where the, the zipper starts I've got uh, a couple stitches here a little little um, row of three stitches and I think it looks nice my mom did indeed send me a box full of just a shit ton of uh, bindings and ribbons and such um, so I've got a couple of black ones. I have three different uh, widths of black ones. I'm gonna use this one as the narrow one. This is seven eighths of an inch. Um, and this is gonna be, I'm just gonna use it like a bias tape. I will probably just do like a running stitch along the edge and not bother to let, like I'll do it close to the edge because I can't be bothered to do anything fancier with this pleather like my my fingers have had enough and then for the um for the straps that are going to go under the shoe i think what i'm going to do is actually instead of just using a 
plain like strip of this. I think what I might actually do is take this one. This is uh, an inch and a half wide and I might fold this one in half and then stitch it like down like that so that it's just stronger. I don't think I need to do that but I just you know I can so I will because I don't I'm looking at this I don't really like the uh, the width of it for for an undershoe strap um, and folding this in half is like you know that seems too thin. It would work fine but it just seems a, little, a bit thin for my taste so uh, folding this in half will give me a sort of an in-between length for that. Actually, I'm realizing now that I might have a bit of a problem. This doesn't have any kind of stretch, and I need it to have stretch if I want it to go around these big old curves down at the bottom. I think this would be fine for, like, the top of the boot, because that's, like, just hard angles. Like, these are, these are straight lines. But, um... I don't know if I'm going to be able to use this down here. Like, if I'm trying to stitch this down, it's not going to want to... Like, if I get this really close to the edge, the middle is close to the edge, it's going to want to do a lot of, like, that. Like, it's going to want to pucker a lot and not cooperate or be pretty or anything. And this is, like, a really sharp curve that I have right here, as opposed to, like, if this was a bias tape. This is a bias tape that's in the wrong color. I don't have any black bias tape here. But if this was a bias tape, it's much more prone to, you know, stretching along this, you know, long ways. So that would be much more cooperative and much more willing to work with what I want it to do. Because that's what it's made for. So that's really frustrating and I don't know for sure what I want to do. I have, I think I have like a black, I don't know how much of it I have, but I think I have a black fabric, but I don't really want to make bias tape just so that I can finish the bottom of these covers. What I really want is to be done with this. So I don't know if maybe I'll just try to do this anyway. Like, I I might just try to do it anyway and see how well I can pass it off. Actually, fuck this. So since this pleather is actually just like really, really flimsy and, and like, I can, I can push a hand needle through one layer of this like it's butter, like, I've decided that I don't want to deal with hand stitching anymore with this. I'm, I'm, I'm so tired. <laughs>
god. Hello. 